All right, there we are back again and say chapter 11 as we recap this book, The Two Witnesses. These witnesses, as uh, it is taught, the two olive trees, and naturally the Zechariah chapter 3 and 4 go into much detail about the two sons of oil, no gender uh, taken. As to how Satan finally messes up, though, and in the same city in verse 8 in which the Lord was crucified, they killed these two witnesses that had much power. And they begin to celebrate that the, the uh, opposition to their great leader is finally done away. But on three and a half days, they're, they're not suffered to go in a tomb because they're going, they, they're going to claim that fellow that claimed to be Christ, they stole his body away anyway. And we're going to leave these out where we can watch them, and there's nobody going to steal them. But on three and a half days, life will enter them, and a paralyzing fear will go over the people that have been deceived by the false Christ. Come to rapture them out of here. Boy, will they be frightened. Why? They'll know they worship the devil because they were biblically illiterate and listened to traditions of men that make void this letter that God has written to you. Instantly in those same streets, 7,000 die instantly and not the second death. Why? Because it's the Nephilim, the fallen angels that are kicked out with Satan, which we'll learn read of here in the next chapter, that's chapter 12. So there you have it, Satan's little old reign here on earth. Chapter 12, then, when we come to it, it, his, it pauses, it's a parenthetical chapter, and it goes even back into the first earth age and Satan's method of operation there, and how he deceived a third of God's children in verse 4. The old dragon is, uh, do you want to know what Satan's name is? He drew them out for a long period of time. But what happens just at the end? That's now, very soon. It will happen in this generation of the fig tree. Verse 7 of that chapter 12 would read, And there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. That's why Satan is in heaven now. In good standing, no way. He's sentenced to death. But when Christ said, get behind me, that's where he's been ever since, physically. Spiritually, his little old evil spirit can roam and run. But he's cast out where? Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. You want to know Satan's name? Listen to it. That old serpent, yep, the dragon, the serpent, called the devil, another one of his names, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. How much of the world? Hey, it's not going to be a penny ante poker game, my friend, of who can, who can uh, keep the, the, the uh, deceiving his face. The whole world is going to whore after him because of biblical illiteracy if they're not careful. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That's why it's written by Christ in Matthew 24 on this same subject. It's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. They're going to be taking and giving in marriage again to those fallen angels. I don't know, read it for yourself. That's what God's Word states. Are you ignorant of it, or are you familiar with God's Word? Matthew 24 will inform you of what I'm stating. Genesis 6 tells you when the these angels made their first trip. Read the first five verses of Genesis 6 and you'll be informed. So he hears this uh, commotion. It's peaceful in heaven. That's why at the seventh trump there was peace a half hour before the fact. Why, Satan and his goonies are gone. You see, Satan called the accuser in verse 10. And you see him called the dragon in verse 13. And you see him called the serpent in verse 14 as he chases God's election or tries to convert them, but the earth helps them. 
So you see, it's important that you know these names for their, I, we could go into far more depth as we did when we taught that chapter. Hope you didn't miss it. But the woman has the victory, and that woman is God's bride. That woman is the woman that had that key of David. Even the tribes of all tribes and all of the ethnos as we learned of, the nations, and certainly the testimony of Jesus Christ would come forth. Now chapter 13 then, as we recap this entire book in one session, speaks of two systems. And this is the way Satan operates. Again, that 12th chapter having been a telescope, a parenthetical, a chapter in parentheses that covers the world it was and right up to the time that Satan is cast out on this earth. Now, 13 tells you how he operates when he's cast on this earth. He causes this one world political system to rise from the people called the sea, the sea of people. And it is a political system. And that political system called the New World Order or one worldism almost comes into being like a one world money in part or a whole uh, continent money all of one kind and so forth as we see the growing signs and the labor pains of the end of this age. And then it receives a deadly wound. Who does? A political system. How does a political system receive a deadly wound? Well, uh, somebody goofs up. A political deadly wound is when you do something so unmoral or...